Hello and welcome back to the channel. Well, I can't believe it, it's our last day here in Lithuania. It's 11 a.m. now and at 6 a.m. tomorrow we head off and grab our flight back to London. I'll do a bit of a day in the life video today. So it's 11 o'clock, we're having a late breakfast. I'm then going to go and grab one of the electric mopeds and head off to the other side of the city, which in reality is only about 10 minutes away and go to a client of mine, which is Car Vertical. And that's one of the many tech startups in Lithuania. A lot of people often ask me, you know, what's, what's the main industry within Lithuania? Well, certainly in Vilnius, tech startups are very, very hot at the moment. There are a lot of them. So I'll take you with me on that. Then I'll go and pick Monica up, and in the evening we'll grab a cocktail and a meal and wrap up our time here in Lithuania. But if anyone was, was considering should you come to, to Lithuania for a nice summer holiday, a little weekend break? Hugely recommend it. If you're looking at accommodation prices, for example, and bear in mind, this is a capital EU city. You can get one month accommodation here for around about £1,200 in peak season on Airbnb. I mean, try getting that anywhere else in, in an EU country. So if you look at it comparatively to other EU countries, superb value. Cost of eating out, probably about 20% cheaper than the UK. Supermarkets, possibly actually a little bit more expensive to be, to be completely honest, but overall incredible quality of life, accommodation prices, oh, such, such good value. That's part of the reason we extended it. Right, I'm gonna tuck into these, go and grab an electric scooter, drop Monica off, and we'll get the day started. Monica, come on, I don't want anyone else taking it. Scooter identified. Vilnius is so good for personalized public transport, whether it's the little electric scooters or these electric mopeds, you're never more than about 150 meters away. It's, do you know what, it's so good, genuinely hand on heart, that you can actually live in Vilnius without having any of your own transport. We've used City B for cars, we've used Skok for mopeds if you want to go with two people, and the scooter if I just fancy a ride by myself with some peace and quiet. It's amazing. This is quite similar to Barcelona, where you just download an app, I can then find my scooter, tap on the scooter, reserve it, start rental. Follow the rules. I wasn't going to do this, Monica just said, Freddie, put the cap on and be a good be a good influence. It's for, I don't want to pretend I always wear these. I've never worn these. I'm just wearing this for camera. And the good thing is you can see yourself in the window and I look absolutely, I look like I work at a, a fishmonger's or something. It's brilliant. XL helmet, let's take that. Uh, I almost forgot to, to introduce one of these scooters. I've used this a couple of times now. I can confirm in the city it's excellent. It's one of these how do you say that? New. New? One of these new electric scooters. You started to see these all over the place in London. Monica, I'll whiz over to you and show you the dashboard so you can see what I see. Right. Little on button there. You can see how much battery is left there, so 35%. And it is just as simple as twist and go. Front brake, back brake, nothing else at all. Little cubby hole for the phone. And for two people, it's comfy, isn't it? Yeah, it's small but comfy. It's more than happy doing about 30 miles an hour through town, even with two people on it. And it is. It's an excellent, excellent form of city transport. I really, really like these and genuinely fun. Monica, let's go.
I just passed this beautiful old Goldwing 1100. Stunning looking bike with full Hepcone Becker pannier setup, Lithuanian bike in a beautiful blue with. Just love how well set up these are for touring proper all day comfort touring seats with that great looking 1100 engine and that front end. What must this be? Early 1980s or something like that. Fantastic looking bike. With 55, that well, at least 55,000 kilometers on the clock. May well have gone round the clock at least once. Wow. Okay. Back on the scooter. Well, we had a delicious Shalti Bache beetroot soup for lunch, and I've just realized that's the last beetroot soup that I'm going to have now in my time in Lithuania. And that in itself is an emotional moment. I'm going to take you in now to the car vertical office, which is right behind me. I've just spent the past half an hour in there, and it's one of the most feel-good offices I think I've ever been into. Certainly, it's completely different from the offices that I've ever been in or I've ever worked in, and they're all real genuine petrol heads in there. So I'll take you in there, do a full front to back, because there are treats everywhere in this office. Let's go. Well, firstly, I hope, I hope this works. Yep, okay, so we start off in the entrance area, car vertical there, and you can see this, this just gives you a little idea about the passion for cars that they've got. One of my old ones, I remember this so well. Old Mark II Golf with a beam and a mic behind. You can see a few of the team there having a meeting. I mean, imagine having this in an office. Through here, you've got the data team in there who do all of the programming, things like that. Nürburgring, meeting room. This is amazing. So these are the fastest ever laps on the Nürburgring. A Porsche hybrid, so way faster than everything else. That all looks fairly normal, apart from the speed of the Porsche hybrid. But then if you look closer, look at the dates of the cars. The third, fourth, and fifth car are all from 1983, about 40 years ago or so. Incredible how old cars can still be so good. One of the other rooms in here, and this is the see they're working here but this is the, the BD room in here with the guys working and then one of them is clearly a biker because there's a helmet at the back there. It's incredible how the startup scene is in Lithuania and in Vilnius. For example, Car Vertical. They were founded just in 2019 and they're already now, I think, in something like 30 countries. They've got 1 million unique users every single month. And they've got such an amazing office for, relatively speaking, it's such a young company. And I think they managed to get all of their data from about 900 different data sources. So it's one of the leading companies in the area. The BD area and the two guys on BD at the moment, they're specifically working on cracking the UK market. And everything I see here, it's, it's the kind of company that I would genuinely love to work for. It's absolutely brilliant and eye-opening seeing what these modern offices that you see from the street are really like when you get inside. Incredible, incredible what's happened in relatively such a short space of time. Well, that was lovely. I need to now find an electric scooter and get back across town. Probably 10 minutes, so long as I can find an electric... Ooh, an electric scooter somewhere. Wow. A Buell. Ooh, that's a rare beast. Flip the camera. If you want something really left field and different from everyone else, go and have a look at Buell's. This was a Harley Davidson owned sports bike, performance focused brand under Harley-Davidson. I think they did 1,000cc kind of bikes. 
they look really good. I actually considered one of these before I bought my Triumph Speed Triple. It was in, it was in the shortlist. You can sh see there it's belt drive. Very unique looking, really short wheelbase. Lightning, Buell Lightning. Great bike. I think that would be a really good investment actually. Very stripped back, looks really good all in black and with that that front end with the twin lights and the V-twin engine you can see just there underneath the frame with the exhaust right at the bottom. Looks great like that. for the final evening in Vilnius. Off to meet Monica's cousin for dinner and then a few drinks afterwards. I thought it's a perfect opportunity now, now that we've been here very close to six weeks, to address a question that quite a few people have asked, and that is, does Lithuania actually feel safe with everything going on at the moment? And I can say categorically, Lithuania itself completely safe. In fact, it actually feels like one of the safest countries I've ever been to. So with regards to all of the, the awful things going on in Ukraine at the moment, uh, Lithuania feels very, very safe. And I really, really would, would say that it shouldn't even be a concern in your mind. Um, just come here, feel free of worry that, that this is a country at risk, because at least in my eyes, from what I've seen, it, it feels completely safe and I wouldn't worry about it even one bit. We're going back to this evening. It's such, I mean, the weather has just got better and better over the past probably three or four weeks or so. Monica's pointed that out. Diavel, Ducati. Oh, I just had to go back. That is a stunning looking bike. Wow, you can pick those up for relatively good money now. It's still about 28 degrees now at 6.30. I need to catch Monica up, who's in the green dress, because we are, of course, late. So I'll put the camera down and I'll have to run in this 28 degrees for the last 10 minutes or so. myself away from the cocktail spot and it's a great just such a perfect place to end the vlog and end our time in Vilnius here right up on one of the cocktail bars thank you so much everyone for coming along for this can't believe it six week Lithuanian adventure if it's a place that you've never considered but maybe in the back of your mind you're wondering what it's like well I hugely, hugely recommend it. It's a fantastic country and there's so much to offer. So thanks so much everyone for coming along. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one.